Hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to Platform Strategy. This is Lecture Three A. In this lecture, we want to give you an introduction of information economics. So I'm going to go through two steps. First, I'm going to talk about some basic ideas about information economics. How do we categorize asymmetric information? What are their implications? What are some basic ways to deal with them? And then. As this is a course regarding platform strategy, I will talk more about information asymmetry on platforms and maybe some remedies for them. So let's start. So this、uh, term, information economics, obviously is some kind of economics, right? Or you may call it economics of information. Basically, it is a branch of economics. It talks about what. Whether information is valuable regarding economic values, what's the implication of owning or missing some information, and about information acquisition and information sharing, those things regarding information at all. So it's not just related to information、uh, technology, okay? Information systems. So that's important, but that's not everything for information economics. As long as you are talking about the inform the economics of information, then it belongs to information economics. So, in particular, our major focus is on information asymmetry. So, this term seems to be a very、uh, knowledgeable term, but actually, the concept is simple. Information asymmetry simply means inside a system of multiple persons. There are some people who know something that other people do not know. As long as the thing happens, then we say there exists information asymmetry in between all these persons here. Okay. So as a very quick example, I, as an instructor, I'm offering this course, and I know what's going to happen in the final exam. Suppose there is a final exam. Okay. I know what will be the problems. I know what will be the answers, but I'm not going to tell you. So you, as a student, and then you're going to see. Oh, okay, there exists some information asymmetry. I know something that you don't know. That's information asymmetry. Okay, so we do care about information asymmetry. Why? Because if everybody knows everything, okay, then those value, those information typically has no value. We don't have acquisition and sharing issue. Only if there are information symmetry, so that information is valuable. All right. So information economics provides us an analytical framework to analyze situations with information asymmetry. So basically, we need to do some categorizations. So there are two kinds of asymmetric information, and in particular, hidden information and hidden actions. So the difference is on whether we may decide its values or not. Suppose I secretly know one thing that you don't know, but I cannot change that information. That's hidden information. Okay. On the other hand, if I know something that you don't know and I can change it, that's information.、Uh, that's hidden action. So maybe one example is going to help us understand that. So. <coughs> Suppose I, as a professor, I talk to you and I say, "Hey, everyone, next week please submit something as your homework eight, for example." And then after one week, everybody shows up, but no one submit the homework. I am surprised and say, "Hey, how come you don't do homework eight at all?" Some people may say, "Oh, professor, that's too difficult. Uh, we have learned about uh everything, but we don't know how to do calculus." So your calculus homework is too difficult for us. In that case, I don't know what's the intelligence degree of students. Maybe students are all very smart, but maybe they have no experience on calculus, so they don't know how to do it. That's reasonable. But when students say they don't know calculus, I don't know whether it's true or not. Right? I don't know the background of students. I don't know where they come from. I don't know what they、uh, took as courses in the past. So I don't know whether students really don't know calculus, or maybe they just don't want to do their homework, right? The ability of doing calculus 
is a student's hidden information. He cannot change it easily. He cannot just change it in one week. Uh, maybe there are some very smart guy can do that, but most people cannot. Okay, then in that case, the ability of doing calculus is a student's hidden information. Similarly, but differently. Suppose next week everybody show up and say, "Hey, professor, we don't do the homework because we don't have time to do that." The student council is asking us to do a lot of service. Uh, I'm also running a company, and the company is so then is is facing a lot of difficulties. So I need to spend all my time on it. Okay, my mother is sick, my grandma is uh dead, and so on. Blah 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 blah. So I just have no time to do it. There is a one week. And I don't know what you do during this week. In that case, that what you do is your hidden action. But you actually can change, can determine what to do. In that case, the amount of time you have, or the amount of time you allocate to the homework, or your effort level, is hidden action because that's actually something you can determine. I, as a professor, I cannot see it. But indeed, you are able to do it. You can change your effort level. You can change your amount of time you spend. Then that's hidden action. Okay, so that's two major、uh, categories of asymmetric information. So let's look at some more examples regarding hidden information. That's the following. For example, a very typical situation is that. We as a seller, we really hope to know how much our consumer evaluate our product. We want to know that whether he is willing to pay fifty dollars, sixty dollars, eighty dollars, or one hundred dollars, so that we may set the accurate price to sell to them. However, we're not going to know that because a customer will never tell us how much he is willing to pay, right? So this is a hidden information. A customer knows. He, how much he's willing to he's willing to pay, but we don't know. Or sometimes it's the other way. We as manufacturers, we know our product reliability. We know how good our supplier is. We know、um, what's the process we do products.、Uh, and in many cases, we know it, but the customers does not. If that's the case, then we own some hidden information. Suppose. The technology level of our factory cannot be changed easily. All right. Suppose the human resource in our factory cannot be changed easily. If that's the case, then this is hidden information. And finally, a retailer typically knows more about the market demands compared to the manufacturer. The manufacturer can ask retailer about the market demand, but the retailer typically says something else. For example, if you as a retailer, you are going to tell your manufacturer saying that, "Oh, the market is very good." Why is that? Because you want your manufacturer to prepare a lot of inventory, to prepare a lot of capacity, so that if the market is really good, you are going to get products easily. But even if your market is actually bad, you are still trying to convince your manufacturer it's not so bad. Otherwise, if the manufacturer does not create inventory, that's going to hurt you. That's hidden information. You as a retailer, you are not so easy to change those、uh, market conditions, right? So that's hidden information for you. Regarding hidden actions, again, consumers and、uh, sellers. A consumer typically can determine how to use a product. So I purchase a smartphone. Maybe I should not use it while I'm taking a bath, but even that's the case, the seller typically does not know it, at least for now. All right, so that sometimes creates some problems regarding, for example, warranty. A seller typically sets some warranties on some technology products, but as consumers, we sometimes may fail to follow those rules regarding warranties. But still, we will try to convince the seller that oh no 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 I didn't do all the things. It's just that your product is broken. All right. So that's something that the seller does not know about how a consumer, how careful a consumer is regarding using that product. 
Okay, and then it's possible that there is a salesperson who can privately decide how hard to work. So I hire a sales salesperson. The salesperson should go somewhere a very、uh, crowded corner and try to talk to everybody to sell my product. But once he is out for business, I don't know what he or she is doing, right? He may simply goes to a coffee shop and have a coffee for an afternoon, and then come back and say, "Oh, the market is bad. I just try my best, but no one wants to buy our product." That's possible. So whether an employee really tries his best is up to him. He can make the decision, and I cannot see it. If that's the case, that's hidden in action again. Or lastly, regarding that reliability thing, a manufacturer in some in some situations can privately determine the reliability. Sometimes a manufacturer can decide what what flavor to add into the product. The manufacturer can determine. Whether we want to hire strong guys or weak guys, and so on and so on and so on. So for those parts that a manufacturer can make a decision quickly, that's hidden action. Or if there is something that the manufacturer cannot change, for example, the quality of materials provided by a supplier, then that's hidden information. Okay. So it really depends on whether that piece of information may be changed. By the information owner or not. Sometimes, of course, they appear together, just like the manufacturer and the retailer and the the, the, the consumer. All these things may be、uh, intertwined, and we do need to take a look at everything, because there are so many pieces of information. Some are hidden information, some are hidden action. That's of course possible.